Fury Car Audio. How many of you guys have heard of this brand? Well, back in the 90s, they were a deal. That's right. They had amplifiers, crossovers, speakers, and more. You can see here in this particular brochure, we have the FA series. There are a few different models, and we're going to take a closer look at the ones available. But the one in particular is the FA2150, rated 150 watts by 2 at 4 ohms, 250 by 2 at 2 ohms, or 540 watts bridged. Looking at this old school Orion Blue Book, we can see the FA2150 1997, approximately $600 was the list price, which equates to around $1,140 in 2023. I also believe this amp is from 1995 range, according to the brochure, which was 95, so it could be a 96 model. Here you can see the amp compared to the Punch 150, pretty big overall. It's interesting that it says multi-channel, 150 by 2 plus 500 by 1. That must be in the three-channel mode, because this is a two-channel amp. Here on one side, the screw down terminals for ground, remote, and 12 volt. Also, we have three 30 amp ATC style fuses for your external fusing. Very easy to replace those if needed. Then we have also screw down terminals for the left and right channel. Again, this is a two channel amplifier, which can be used in a three channel mode with passive crossovers. On the opposite side, a high level input, level control 0.2 to 2 volts. Also, RCA inputs, the standard RCAs, not Tiffany. Power and protect LEDs, line level output. We also have a subwoofer control, 50 hertz to 250 hertz, min or max, low pass filter, off or on. It's very odd that it says min or max for the subwoofer level adjustment because it's not a level adjustment. That is a crossover frequency. Why would it say min or max? Anyways, I digress. Let's talk about the amplifier more. Here you can see the exterior is not perfect, but it is an amp we're going to try on the amplifier. Dino, of course. Let's fire it up here, check the settings. You can see on the left, the RMS power output in watts, the middle of the ohm load, the right, the voltage of the dyno. Unfortunately, I did not have the clamp indicator here, so we're not gonna be able to calculate efficiency. These videos were captured back in 2015. I just realized that I never made this video, so I'm giving you guys some old school footage so we can see how this amp performs. Four ohms rated 150 by two. Let's try the certified test 1% distortion at 1 kilohertz. And yes, 185 and 183 at 14.24. Now we'll try the dynamic test. 1 kilohertz dynamic. And very close to the same. If we go back and look at that manual that I showed earlier, the brochure, it does say this amp is fully regulated, which makes sense. We'll not have a lot of extra dynamic power. 2 ohm stereo is rated 250 watts by 2. Certified test first. 1% distortion, and we easily get that 284, 274, average about 279 watts per channel. Now let's try the dynamic burst, 2 ohm stereo. There you go, nicely over 300 watts. About 326 watts or so average between the two channels. Very nice. Next up, we're going to bridge the amp and try it at 4 ohms mono. It's rated 500 or 540, I think is what it actually said in that brochure, which is kind of odd. Should be the same as two ohm stereo times two. Let's check it out. And we get it 563 at 13.93. We'll reset the dyno here for the dynamic test, four ohms. We are using the one kilohertz track here. 640, 60, keeps counting up. 666 dynamic. We should have let it count a little more. <laughs> The devil child, 14.31 volts. Two ohms mono, this amp is not rated to handle two ohms mono as far as I know, but we tried it anyway. Even back in 2015, we weren't any smarter than we are now, so we do dumb things. Let's try it out. Certified, one kilohertz, 1% 1 distortion, 606, 13.57. So it didn't do much more than it did and four ohms, but what about the dynamic burst? Check this out. She's over a thousand, 1,045 at 13.97. Very nice. Next up, we'll show the results. You pretty much saw all these different tests, but I didn't show the clipping test. You can see the numbers here are very close to the 1% uh, distortion test on, in the stereo as well as on the mono. I didn't run two ohms mono to clipping because that's really brutal. On amplifier. Now next up, let's gander at what's inside this 90s Korean built class AB amplifier. So what we'll have to do is take this one side off. There are four of Allen's bolts, so we'll use Allen's key to get inside. 
pull this panel off very slow for some reason. You can see the RCAs which are mounted directly to the board and we have to slide this top plate out. Should have used a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser to clean this amp up some. I'm not even sure who I borrowed this amp from. I never even heard of Fury when I did this test. Anyway, let's take a look here and see about the guts. So you can see lined up we have eight capacitors there. Looks like those are all rail caps. There's the power supply section with the tiny capacitors, maybe for um, some tiny capacitance. There's a CD. I had to put this down to kind of compare the size of this amp because you can't really tell how big it is. It's pretty big for uh, an amplifier, but again, this is a you know late 90s class AB, so that's what we expect. There you have my test, the Fury FA2150. I did not see a serial number on this amp, so I'm gonna give you some footage of what I actually did to make it a little special. All right guys, since there is no serial number anywhere I can find on this Fury FA2150 amp, I'm gonna use my Sharpie here and I'm gonna sign it right here. Big D whiz. And I'm gonna put an F and I'm gonna put today's date, which is 091915. That's gonna be the serial number. So if you get this amp, you can be assured that the numbers you see on the test sheet are the ones that I performed.